Coming to you live from the Mediaplex in downtown Windsor, this is a presentation of St. Clair College Journalism. Hi, I'm Shelby Hernandez and you're watching Mediaplex News Now. What do Windsorites really think of the city? Well, a survey was conducted to find out. Sean Preville will give you the details. Is Windsor Essex a good place to live? That's the question posed by an annual report released earlier this fall by the Windsor Essex Community Foundation. The Vital Signs Survey is released yearly around summertime both in print and online, asking residents to rank how they feel about different parts of the community. From transportation to the environment, people in both the city and county rank these sectors with a grade of A to F. Lisa Colodi with the Foundation says the survey is about community engagement. What we're looking for is people to have the voice heard because we want to engage people in their community and help be part of the solution moving forward. But what do residents feel are the best parts of the region? There's a really interesting, very vibrant local art scene. I think the thing I love the most about it is the waterfront right where we are now. You have in Windsor the feel of a, I mean, a big city. Well, small to medium-sized city, but you still have that cordiality of a small town where everybody knows each other, everybody's kind to each other. While people have a lot of positive things to say about Windsor-Essex, one common issue also found in the report is employment. The reason why I didn't move back to Ontario after I finished university was primarily that I knew I likely would not be able to find a job. Career opportunities. Um, Sometimes you can find a job, like an entry-level job, but it's not really going to go anywhere. There isn't really much in the way of uh, startups and new companies coming to Windsor. It's all older industry. Colodi says in order for failing sectors to improve, it will be up to community and business leaders to discover solutions to make the grade next year. So yes, we want the community leaders to take a look at the data, um, organizations that work in those areas, but we also want everyone to take a look at it, to have a conversation about it, and then to get actively engaged. For Mediaplex News Now, I'm Sean Preble. And now let's go outside to Jonathan Hutton who is taking in this surprisingly warm weather. John, what's it like out there? Well, Shelby, right now it's currently a little bit gloomy, six degrees outside, but that's okay because at least it's not snowing. Later on it'll drop to three degrees tonight. I'll be back later on with our three-day forecast. Back to you, Shelby. Thanks, John. Well, it doesn't exactly feel like winter yet, Kayla Wong has a few tips for you when it comes to driving in wintry weather. Local police are taking the time to remind drivers that with the cold weather approaching, there are ways to keep safe while driving. Constable Andrew Julout of the Windsor Police giving some tips for drivers about driving safety. Clear ice from the windshields. It's also important for them to leave more time in getting to their destination, drive a little bit more slowly, and um, it's also important to leave more space in between the vehicle in front of you so that if you have to make a quick stop, you will be able to do so. For cars, local mechanic Nick Papetta says it's important to check and prepare your car in winter. Likely advise snow tires. I'll be checking the antifreeze to make sure it's strong enough. I'll be checking the wiper blades to see that they work properly. I'll be checking the anti-lock brake system because uh, anti-lock brakes are a big part of winter safety. Police department also use social media to make announce about what happened. We utilize social media very frequently to let drivers know what's happening in the city, whether that be car accidents that are at a specific location in the city so that they can avoid that area and make alternate arrangements. Reporting for Mediaplex News, I'm Kayla Wong. Who is Ron Dunn? Well, he's our guest in this edition of Three Minutes With. Hello, I'm David Dyke, and you're watching Three Minutes with Ron Dunn, who is the executive director of Windsor's Downtown Mission. Now, Ron, with uh, Windsor's unemployment rate having climbed uh, recently to 9.6%, I imagine that would have contributed to uh, homelessness in Windsor as well. Um, what kind of increase in demands have you seen at the, uh, at the downtown mission? Well, we don't know if there's a direct link between the unemployment rate and homelessness, but we do know that there's more people living in poverty. Many of them are the working poor, and obviously the unemployment rate affects the, how they live as well. So all of our programs are really swelling uh, to capacity at this moment. Okay. I imagine there'd also be a a need for a, an increase in uh, food supplies as well. Um, what kind of uh, previous uh, food supplies have you had coming in and some of your donators and uh, what do you hope to increase as well yet? Well, Windsor Essex has always treated us very well, but you are right. Because we're helping that many more people, the demand for food is higher. 
So we're still getting the same amount of food in, but we're seeing more people come through our programs. So we are at an all-time low at this moment. Okay. Yeah. Who are some of your uh, suppliers, by, suppliers by this point? Well, all of our suppliers are the folks of Windsor Essex. So um, most of our, if not all of our gifts, come in um, from regular people. They go out and do their shopping, and they grab a couple extra cans of something. There's some businesses that help us out, um, you know, through drives at school and church groups and, and anybody. Um, you know, say the Mediaplex, for example, could do a, a nice drive for us. Okay. Ron, I imagine I, I heard that there, was a, there would be a 24-hour service now being, being provided via downtown Mission. Um, does, that need, does that mean there needs to be a, now an increase in, a, in a, um, volunteers uh, regularly at the, uh, at the Mission as well? Yeah, we actually um, started October 1st as a 24-hour uh, service provider. What that means is now nobody has to leave and we have programs running 24 hours a day. And from a volunteer perspective, that means we've asked the public to step forward even more and, and give us more of their time. So the six o'clock soup program, for example, requires anywhere between four to six new individuals that we didn't have before. So we're working that out right now. Okay. Um, I imagine also that I heard now that visitors were also allowed to come and stay for the whole day, whereas previously they were only able to stay for the morning. Um, does that mean there's going to be more group activities during the day as well? Or? Yeah, we're actually exploring programs right now, actually. All of our programs are kind of being reviewed and uh, looking for what's the best way to operate them and how to expand them as well. So that's in process right now with my uh, management team. What kind of uh, group activities have you been holding up to this point already? Well, we do a lot of art. November 25th, for example, we have a, an art show, which is um, at the mission, and it's folks who have, are using our programs and have gone through an art program trying to sell some of their own artwork. So it's pretty exciting, and it's new. And, um, you know, we're also looking at things like um, counseling, addiction counseling, Bible studies, those types of things as well. All right, Ron, I think that's actually all the time we actually have for today. Um, you've been watching uh, Three Minutes with uh, Ron Dunn, who is the Executive Director for uh, um, Windsor's Downtown Mission. I'm David Dyke, reporting for Mediaplex News Now. The winter season is a tough time of year for those without a roof over their heads, but there are local organizations trying to help. Sean Prevel reports. As the sun sets on warmer temperatures in Windsor, not everyone can go inside to stay warm. When the winter arrives, those who are homeless have to seek shelter where they can. But there are organizations which are trying to help keep people warm and fed. Ron Dunn with the Windsor Downtown Mission says they've been able to help those without a home thanks to the public. We're putting out 726 meals a day on average here at the mission now and uh, that's all based on the generosity of other people. You know if you're looking for a Christmas miracle story that's it. And for people like John Lewis the help is appreciated. It feels good because you're helping people are helping other people. The mission is not the only place for those who are homeless. The Welcome Center Shelter for Women is also there providing 12 beds for women facing homelessness. They are able to provide safe, confidential housing, clothing, food, and other necessities in an emergency. Donations are always welcome as they also have an emergency food bank for up to 1,000 families. Remy Bobo with the center says if people want to donate, it can come in many forms. You know, if you don't have money to give, give your stuff. If you don't have stuff to give, give your time. And if you don't have time to give, then give your thoughts. But Angela Yukonich with the Homeless Coalition of Windsor-Essex County says though the holidays are important, residents should remember to donate even when they're over. Everybody wants to help somebody because it's Christmas time. The reality of it is homelessness and poverty is a year-round issue. The coalition will be conducting a point-in-time count several times at the beginning of the new year. Volunteers will go out and count how many sheltered and unsheltered homeless people there are in a single night. For Mediaplex News Now, I'm Sean Preble. If you're a St. Clair student looking to start up your own business, Genesis can help. The school organization just had a workshop where a recent graduate and local entrepreneur spoke to students. Cassie Malinowski was there. St. Clair College Mediaplex hosted their first success cafe for St. Clair College's newest Genesis Entrepreneurship and Innovation Center. The cafe brings alumni of St. Clair College to speak to the students about their personal experiences as an entrepreneur. Ryan Bro, a recent graduate of the journalism program at the Mediaplex, is the owner of Zebra Media, a photography and videography company. Bro, who's been an active photographer for over a year, has gained a large following on Instagram and Facebook for his creative and beautiful photography style. Um, biggest advice is work hard. And work hard, say yes to everything. Um, don't sell yourself short. 
and be very organized. And if, I feel like if you have those four things, then you can just do anything you want. Genesis offers entrepreneurs a chance to brainstorm, develop valuable products and services, and proceed through the early stages of commercialization. For more information, go to www.sinclaircollege.ca. Have you ever wanted to sit in on a class taught by an MP? Well, some political science students may have that chance. I took a look into what they can expect next semester. As one of his many post-retirement endeavors, former Windsor Tecumseh MP Joe Comartin will be teaching a seminar at the University of Windsor. All 20 spots have already been filled for the fourth year political science seminar. In this seminar, Cole Martin will discuss the problems he sees with the voting system and the democratic process at the federal level. He will also share his experiences in the House of Commons. Cole Martin says the goal is to eventually find the most promising students who will co-author with him and other faculty members on published research papers. He says more people means more ideas. Also recognizing that I have limitations. I'm, you know, I may not be seeing all of the, the perspectives and so bringing in additional people who hopefully have strong opinions of their own, uh, you can hammer out some of the best solutions for the, for the country. According to political science department head John Sutcliffe, at the university, most professors don't have real world experiences. So although university professors usually require PhDs to teach, Sutcliffe says Comartin's 13 years of experiences make him an exception. Political science student Ronnie Haidar agrees. So instead of like reading it from a book and having the task of imagining how or what it may have been, this is somebody who's gone through it and can tell us the intricate details, can tell us perhaps the things that these books cannot cover or the newspaper articles cannot cover. Although the seminar is full for the winter semester, Comartin says he will be teaching for another two or three years. So for those political science students who thought they lost the opportunity, don't worry, it will come up again. For Mediaplex News, I'm Shelby Hernandez. The mayor came to the Mediaplex for an interview and we have the scoop. Hello, I'm Abbas Fali and welcome to 3 Minute Vet, Mayor Drew Delkins. So Drew Delkins, did you achieve your goals for your first year in office? Well, today, as a matter of fact, happens to be the first year, or at least the, uh, the, the one year anniversary uh, since the election. Uh, the actual term started on December the 1st, and so we're well into uh, the first year of the term. And uh, with respect to the objectives, what I really hope to accomplish this year was really to start to set the stage moving forward uh, for the next few years on council, and then of course uh, moving forward uh, for the next 20 years with the, with the creation of a 20-year strategic plan for the city. So we're, we're well underway on that. Uh, we're well through the public consultation period on that 20-year plan, and, and I'm excited about uh, how far we've come in the first nearly one year. Uh, what improvement will see when there are uh, years to come? Well, I think our primary objective certainly is to focus on employment. Uh, we recognize we still have high unemployment and uh, we're doing everything we can to, uh, to create the environment that's worthy of investment, but also to try and diversify our economy using the skill sets that we have here in the community. And so there's been a lot of focus on economic development and job creation because that's really important for our community today. Um, how can Windsor's voice will be heard and uh, provincially or federally? Well, uh, that's been a topic of uh, much conversation since the, uh, the federal election last week. And, uh, and we've elected members uh, both at the provincial and federal level uh, who aren't uh, part of uh, government either, at, either, at either level. Uh, but uh, it, it really, you have to rely on the networks that you have and, and the contacts that you have as a community. And then it's also incumbent upon me as mayor and city councillors to, uh, to reach out to the contacts that we have that we need to reach in order to make sure that we can secure uh, the investment that we need for the community to make sure that our voice and our ideas are heard so that we're included as part of the planning mix at both the provincial and federal level. Uh, we heard that there is a, a new airline f uh, will, uh, will, will, will start its flight from Windsor International Airport soon, as soon as December. Um, can, you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, we've been working for over a year to try and attract another airline with direct service uh, from the City of Windsor. So we, we have National Airlines, which operates out of Orlando Sanford Airport. They start operations on the 17th of December. They will have uh, nonstop flights uh, between Windsor and Orlando twice a week on Thursdays and Sundays. And uh, they have a great looking plane. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic plane, especially for a tall guy like me. They've got lots of room in economy class. And I think people are really going to like uh, 
uh, the service direct from Windsor. We've moved a lot of things along at Windsor Airport, having one airline in the past, uh, Air Canada with service to Toronto. Now we have Air Canada, we have Porter, we have WestJet, we have Sunwing, we have National, and, uh, and we also have uh, AirTran who's going to be offering service uh, to Cancun. So uh, there's some exciting things happening at uh, the airport. We see that as an area uh, for future investment and future development, and we think there's going to be a lot of uh, good things happening there as we move forward in the next few years as well. Uh, is there a plan to make a bigger airport in Windsor? There is no plan to expand the runway uh, at this point. Uh, we can handle almost any aircraft uh, that, that exists today, uh, with the exception of the Dreamliner. We can't, uh, we can't land that plane, but almost any other air aircraft we can land at Windsor Airport. And uh, certainly any future terminal expansions will be, uh, will be based on uh, other airlines that we add. So it's possible in the future we will have to add on an addition to the terminal to, uh, to accommodate uh, other airlines. But right now they're working on a hoteling concept where uh, one, one airline is, is, uh, is not there. We can just change the, the signage and uh, the next airline can log into the computer and put their signage up and, and use that same space. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Abbas Wali and this has been 3 Minutes with Mayor Tridergans. If you're looking to go into post-secondary education and love media and art, then check this out. Now let's go back to Jonathan Hutton outside on the corner of University and Victoria to see if this warm weather will stick around. John? Hey Shelby, got a fun fact for you. Did you know that a falling raindrop's fastest speed it can hit you at is 18 miles per hour? Keep that in mind as we go into our three-day forecast. As tomorrow, there's a chance of showers with a high of 10 and a low of 3. Thursday will be mainly sunny with a high of 5 and a low of minus 1. And Friday, we can expect a mix of sun and clouds with a high of 1 and a low of minus 1. That's it from me at the corner of University in Victoria. Back to you, Shelby. Thanks, John. While John may be tonight's weather specialist, he's a news reporter for the rest of the time. That's why he was at the St. Clair College Open House. Let's take a look. The St. Clair College Journalism Open House kicked off on Saturday, with students and professionals alike visiting the Mediaplex on University and Victoria Avenue. Potential students got to browse and utilize state-of-the-art equipment, talk to professors, and ask students about their experience in the program. Aaron Warren is a potential student that decided to attend the open house. It's awesome. I mean, it looks like a great place to go. You know, it's one of three in the world, if I'm right. Um, can't wait to come here next year if they accept me. Uh, I'll be applying as soon as I can so I can come here. Coordinator Veronique Mandel believes that open houses like this one are a great way to showcase the program and answer any questions potential students may have about journalism. People or older people who want to get into the media world an opportunity to come and see how the real world really works. Because what's extraordinary about our program is that we teach across all platforms, radio, television, print and uh, online digital. For Mediaplex News, I'm Jonathan Hutton. Academics and athletics are both very important. That's why a local school is using one to promote the other. Michael Hugo reports. We've done enough preparation, but I do want to go over this. The F.J. Brennan Center of Excellence and Innovation is helping to emphasize the importance in academic study through athletic participation. Students grades 7 to 12 are taught one of the most important lessons an athlete can learn. It's a concept that many young athletes are yet to grasp, the balancing between academics and athletics. So the question remains, is this program sufficient enough to help our young students learn? Mark Picard is an educator and skills specialist and highlights what sports can do for the young minds of these children. A lot of kids function and learn better uh, when we are able to use sports as a tool to enhance the learning experience. Principal Kevin Hamlin also spots the benefits for students. Well, this gives the student an opportunity to, uh, uh, to, to specify in, in their sports-specific area 
and, and really uh, chase their passion, whether it's uh, hockey, baseball, or soccer. In the age of healthy lifestyles, programs like this may continue to rise. Uh, we're excited about uh, the future of this program and, and we're certainly engaged and, and excited as well as the students and the teachers here uh, uh, about the promise of this program as well. For Mediaplex News, I'm Michael Hugel. Windsor, it's are full of holiday cheer and some of them would like to wish you a happy holiday. Some of our local leaders would like to wish you and yours a happy holiday season. From the men and women of Windsor Fire and Rescue Services, I want to wish everyone within the city of Windsor and the broader Essex-Windsor uh, County area a very happy and safe holiday season. On behalf of all the men and women of the Windsor Police Service, Merry Christmas to everyone and have a great new year. Thank you. December is upon us, and what a great month it is in the city of Windsor. From my family to your family, I'd like to say Merry Christmas, or Happy Hanukkah, or Best of the Holiday Season. On behalf of all members of Windsor City Council, 2015 was a great year, and we look forward to celebrating a great 2016 here in the city of Windsor. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Local artists Chrissy Cochran and Michael Paul came to the Mediaplex earlier today to sing us some Christmas songs. So, let's listen, shall we? Santa baby, just slip a sable under the tree for me. Been an awful good girl, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Santa baby, a 54 convertible to light blue. I'll wait up for you, dear Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight. Think of all the fun I've missed. Think of all the fellas that I Next year I could be just as good If you'll check off my Christmas list Santa baby, I want a yacht And really that's not a lot Been an angel all year, Santa baby So hurry down the chimney tonight Santa honey, one little thing I really need, the deed, to a flat in Detroit, Santa baby, so hurry down the chimney tonight, Santa cutie, come fill my stocking with a duplex and checks, Sign your ex on the line, Santa cutie, and hurry down the chimney tonight. Hurry, come and trim my Christmas tree with some decorations bought at Tiffany's. I really do believe in. So let's see if you believe in me Santa baby, forgot to mention one little thing A ring I don't mean on the phone, Santa baby So hurry down the chimney tonight Hurry down the chimney tonight Mistletoe, I want to get.
get to know you better This Christmas And as we trim the tree How much fun it's gonna be together This Christmas The fireside is blazing bright We're caroling Christmas, it will be a very special Christmas for me. Yeah, na, 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 na. shake a hand, shake a hand, shake a hand. Na, 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 na. Presents and cards are here. My world is full of cheer and you. Christmas and as I look around your eyes I shine a town they do this Christmas the fireside is blazing bright Ooh. we're caroling through the night and this Christmas it will be a very special Christmas Shake a hand, shake a hand, shake a hand. Da, 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 na, 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 na. And have a very merry Christmas. Oh yeah. Whoa. whoa, whoa. Oh. Na, 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 na. Side is blazing bright. We're caroling through the night, and this Christmas it will be a very special Christmas for me. Yeah, shake a hand, shake a hand, shake a hand. Very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, yeah. Well, wasn't that just wonderfully festive? Thanks for tuning in. I'm Shelby Hernandez, and for all of us here at the Mediaplex, Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the new year for the return of Mediaplex News Now. Mediaplex News Now is a production of the St. Clair College Journalism Program. I think it's so important to be taught by industry professionals because they know what they're doing. And they're not just teaching because they read it in a book somewhere. They're teaching because they've lived it. I choose to take control of my future, and my path is St. Clair College. I choose to be here. Please.